All right guys, today I thought this would be an interesting video to make for sure and it might be a little bit more ranty. I don't typically do too many rant videos, but undoubtedly if you guys have been watching the content uh, here of late that I made a pretty big switch from EDC, you know, pocket knife content where I had originally liked doing videos and doing that type of content over back to doing more wilderness survival bushcrafting uh, knife content. And partly that is because you guys love to see that content and I do enjoy making it. I do enjoy being being outside. But also too, another reason why was that I had definitely had expressed in previous videos on EDC my qualms with that community and they never really seemed to get any better. In fact, the kind of fatal blow for me was when I went to go to sell knives to purchase more knives and kind of keep a flow of newer, fresher knives to test, to run, and to make videos on, of course, as a person who likes to collect knives typically does. Now, the problem with this was and I, I had been in this community, I still kind of am in the EDC community, been in it for a while, um, and typically I had never had issues with really selling knives um, or really like getting back uh, value or getting value out of them that I put back in them. Typically, if you would spend, let's just say $250 on a knife, you probably won't get full retail depending on how used it is, depending on how um, you, just overall, how much use has been put on it, how good the condition is. But typically speaking, I keep my knives clean. I have a wicked edge to sharpen them. So oftentimes they leave me better than even factory, at least sharpness wise, of course, you know, there's coating wear. And so I don't typically expect to get full retail um, on knives, uh, but I was very shocked, especially with a handful of my knives where I was getting ultra low balled. Let's just say uh, I purchased a particular knife for about um, $130. The retail for it was $150. And when I went to sell it, I ended up selling it for $70. But what's worse is when I actually put it out on the forums that I typically sell knives on, people were regularly trying to low ball me and try to purchase the knife for $50. Now, that is a really huge loss because not only am I taking a small loss on the knife, but also too, um, when it comes to shipping the knives, being that I you know, am in Alaska and I'm typically shipping to the States, it costs a little over $10, basically $11 to ship a knife out. And so if I were to sell a knife for $50, my net uh, kind of profit, if you will, or kind of ROI, return on investment, would be about $40. And so that is an extremely low return on investment. If I spent $130 on a knife and got $40 back, uh, that would be rough. Now, to be fair, there are still some good people out there in the EDC community, some people that pay fair prices for knives. And once again, I don't typically um, or really ever price gouge people. I don't try to list knives super high or crazy high. I typically almost always list them below low retail um, and you know of course reflective of their state or condition um, but it's just really impressed me um, here of late that how bad the knife seam has gotten and I use that story that ultra low ball story to really um, kind of emphasize one particular fact of why I'm getting out of the EDC knife game why I'm just done purchasing EDC knives the knives that I sell the knives that I keep are gonna be the ones that I keep for into perpetuity and the ones that I sell I'm never going to purchase again and once again I'm not going to be buying any more EDC knives mark my words um, I'm just done with the community as a whole and the reason why is that this process and once again that story is definitely repeated itself multiple times from my experience and what it really comes down to is that there are a lot of people in this community that just aren't truly respectful of the other community members. I think the mindset has switched from trying to collect knives, trying to enjoy this passion hobby to a kind of hoarder mentality where people who already have maybe not super high incomes or don't budget correctly for knives try to purchase as many knives as possible. They try to make essentially poor financial decisions. And on top of that, what I see the reselling forms and knife communities really becoming is essentially a place where people who, you know, just want to collect, just want to hoard knives, go to try to essentially get the best possible deals at the seller's expense. Now, I do get that we are in an economic downturn, and this is certainly a high inflation um, period in time, but it, it, for the most part, I've once again weathered many storms in the knife community, and like I said, I've never quite seen it to the level where people are both 
so unwilling to pay, you know, reasonable asking prices for knives, but also so desiring of all the knives out there. They want every single knife you got to, for sale, but they don't want to pay a single dime for it. Another really good example of this is I had a person contact me. I was selling, you know, a, a list of knives and he offered me um, <clears throat> $600 for um, knives that would go easily for all together. I mean, I could easily sell each of them individually. You know, if I sold each one individually over a thousand dollars and so it's once again these ultra low ballers that want every knife you have but they absolutely are not going to pay retail they're not even going to pay you a respectable asking price for a knife they're just going to pay you whatever they feel they can and so once again there's a lot of this financial irresponsibility that boils down to because these people are making financial mistakes on their end they want you to essentially foot the cost of that by giving them knives um, for very low prices for instance this knife here i had listed multiple times and i had legitimately this right here is a crk umnamzan in very good condition you know it's maybe not quite like new but it is not far off honestly um, and i honestly sold or i'm selling the umnamzan because i just really don't carry it that much it's a nice knife i wanted one in the collection now that i've actually owned one <laughs> i don't really honestly put it in my pocket that much anymore so it just really does just falls by the wayside right so i listed it originally for you know like five hundred dollars i think it is maybe 450 something like that and someone had the audacity to try to you know offer me 350 if not 325 for it so um you know like i said people are just ultra low balling and i'm not quite sure why this is in the community i've never really seen this part of the community or just this kind of ultimate toxicity where people know that you know if you went to go to try to buy an amazon new if you could even find one in stock you're going to be spending a minimum of 600 to 550 dollars right on secondary 450 to 400 is a very reasonable price and so trying to get 350 to 325 is just insane to me it's just honestly like i said i've seen more um, posts and i've seen more like responses and messages from people who are just absolutely disrespectful with pricing you know like once again i'm not trying to be rude to them but i think this outlines an underlying cause that like i said people want to collect as many knives as they can all the while they don't really think about the other person or you know what is a fair honest price for that um, knife you know and so they're just like well i'll give you this much you know it'll just way undercut me and i've had other people that you know once again not to say that everyone's as fortunate or everyone needs to make a lot of money to be in this um, crowd or community but i've had people that have legitimately told me that you know like they're on a fixed income they can't afford a lot of um, you know they can't put out a lot of money for a knife and once again it's like you know I want to try to be reasonable with these people and I try to be fair in my dealings, but at the same time too, knives are a tertiary need. You do not need any of these things. So if you're out here, you know, trying to haggle with people saying that you're on a fixed income, you're on a low income, you really shouldn't be buying knives at all. Like you should probably concentrate on trying to um, make more money for your life, then come back to knives. Knives, I mean, it'd kind of be like walking into a Rolex store and going to a used Rolex, you know, Submariner or Explorer and saying, well, you know, that's a great, a great watch. I really want it, but I'm on a fixed income, right? It's like a watch is something that you absolutely do not need, especially in this day and age. So why are you, if you're truly on a fixed income, why are you going and trying to to buy a tertiary need right if you happen to have twenty thousand dollars and you really want a rolex watch then great more power on you go buy it and go have fun with it enjoy it right but if you are struggling living paycheck to paycheck you probably should not be in these communities and you probably should not be disrespectful to people who are trying to sell knives off and once again looking at the whole cost um, you know of purchasing a knife from someone and they having to ship it to you um, sometimes they you have to foot gns costs or goods and service costs or fees so in total you know if you look at say i sell a knife for 150 dollars i have to pay a five dollar gns fee a you know, $11 shipping fee, that's $16. And if I'm already taking a loss on that knife, that's 16 additional dollars of that 150, that is uh, just gone, right? That's over 10% of that sale. That's just taken away in fees, right? So it's, it's these types of things that I, 
have consistently worked with the knife community, been in the knife community, and I've just really noticed over the last year, if not slightly a little bit more, that there's just a lot of uh, very disrespectful actors in the community. And at this point, like I said, it's becoming such a an idea of just how many knives can I get? How many, you know, I just want a huge collection. I just want so many knives. And then, you know, you want to just turn around and have this, this great lofty connect knife collection, but you don't want to pay any money for it. And so, you know, I've d certainly been on um, both sides of like not wanting to overpay for a knife, but also to always remaining respectful and knowing that person's, you know, like the costs of everything that go into it, right? And so, you know, like looking at the fair market value of a knife, going and looking at places like Blade HQ, like how much does a knife cost brand new? And, or is it discontinued? Can you even get this knife? Is it limited edition? Um, you know, and then like having the box and documents for it, having all the little trinkets that go along with it. These things do help retain and add value. Um, and I just think a lot of people no longer see this in the community. And I think the actual like collecting of knives is just going tremendously downhill. In addition to it's, it's very unfortunate because not only do people want to absolutely shaft you on knife prices, they absolutely want the brand new unused knife. And if it's not brand new and unused, then they have zero interest in paying even a discounted price or heavily discounted price on that knife. So I find it very interesting that this community is becoming as fickle and as weird as it is because, you know, they sit there and like I said, there's really this mindset of, you know, they want the most without having to, or wanting to, they want the most, but they want to pay the least. And it's just a very weird community. And so I for sure am getting out of the knife community. I am like definitely done with it. And uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see the future of the channel as a whole, not alluding to anything here, but I am definitely uh, removing myself from the community because it's just become a very toxic place where it's just ultimately like, it's, it's unfortunate to see. And I know that there are other people, if you follow other YouTubers, such as that dude in blue, um, he has made very similar conversations about um, the car community. And of course, I'm limitedly involved in the car community. I'm limitedly evolved, involved in many communities. Um, knives were kind of my go-to and I really did enjoy them. But I think it's like, it's one thing to enjoy the knives and the collecting, but if you can't have a community that's also worthwhile and enjoyable to be a part of, then, um, the community just really falls apart. And so I think that's where we're at with the knife community. Like I said, there's a lot of communities out there like this, especially in the US, but even internationally that have just um, really taken a turn for the South and uh, I just refuse to be a part of it. So yeah, like I said, I'm selling off the last of my knives. They'll probably all be sold by the time you guys see this video, but I'm um, selling off the last of my knives that like I said, I don't really carry and uh, can definitely live without. And uh, yeah, just super unimpressed with it. And uh, it's definitely unfortunate to see something that you really enjoy, you know, favorite pastimes, just kind of going the way of the dinosaur. But I thought it'd be worthwhile kind of talk, talking in this video, kind of bringing it up because once again, you know, similar to people like that dude in blue with the car community, you know, it's, it's really unfortunate when you see, you know, the community that you kind of spent a lot of time in and that you enjoyed kind of just just unraveling or unfolding and just becoming something that's no longer worth being a part of. And so, yeah. Anyways, guys, I won't drag this video out any longer. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.